Hey guys, I hope you're having a great day today. This is my Rheem Air Source Heat Pump Water Heater. I installed this in spring of 2021. I'm continuously being asked for updates on this after a few years have passed, if I still like it, do I still recommend it, and what do I think? So I thought this would be a good time for an update. I went through both videos, I skimmed through all of the comments, and I made some notes as to what the common discussion points were and the questions that were being asked. There are three main topics that we'll take a look at. There are several smaller ones as well, but first, let's take a look at the energy usage, the historic energy usage of this water heater. Here's a graph from the app of the past one year of usage, 1,009 kilowatt hours. Now I pay 14 cents per kilowatt hour, so that's roughly $141 per year, or $12 per month. $12 per month to heat the water, that's, that's almost nothing. Now I essentially don't pay anything at all because this water heater is not even connected to the power grid. It's connected to my solar powered battery based power system. It's been entirely off grid since 2021 when I installed it, and it's still off grid today at the end of December 2024. I haven't paid a dime of electricity to run this water heater. The most common question that's been asked has centered around noise. How much noise does this thing make? Can I install it in X room? Will I hear it? Will it be annoying? Think of this as a small window air conditioner. That's pretty much exactly what it is. Instead of taking heat from the air and putting it outside, it's taking heat from the air and putting it into your water. It isn't loud, but it does produce a low compressor type hum. It's a low hum that you can hear. I would not install this in a living space. I wouldn't install it in a room next to a living space. You will hear it and it will irritate you. Mine is installed in the basement. The bathroom is directly above me. I can hear it faintly in the bathroom upstairs, but I don't hear it in any of the other living spaces in the house, and I don't hear it in the finished section of the basement. Now, there is a cinder block wall that separates this mechanical space from the finished section of the basement, but I still don't hear it. But if I had this in a living space or in a closet in a living space that was separated by drywall, uh, you would definitely hear it, and like I said, it would probably irritate you. Um, a, a basement's a great place to put one of these. A garage is a great place to put one. I hear a lot of people putting them out in their garages. If you have the plumbing and the power out there, that's a great place to put one of these as well. Next is on the topic of temperature. Does this make the room cooler and does your heating system need to run more? If you're installing this in a conditioned living space or a conditioned space, logic would suggest that if you're removing heat from the air, your heating system is going to have to run extra to put that heat back into the air. Okay, that just makes sense. That's not the case for most people. This is a 1970s home. This is an unfinished, unconditioned basement. It rarely drops below 65 degrees here. There's enough heat seeping through the floor from just air leaks. There's enough heat from, from the exterior walls and from the, the exterior floor. You know, this is, what, six to seven feet below grade, so it does make a difference. So yes, sometimes when I walk into this mechanical storage space, it does feel a bit chilly, but why does that matter? I'm not living down here. If I am cold, I just put on a sweater, I put on a separate shirt. It's not a big deal, it's not a conditioned space. Quite a few people install these in garages, and like I just said, I think that's a great idea. A garage is also typically not a conditioned space. Unless you're installing this in a conditioned space, then I don't think the temperature drop caused by this is much of a concern. The number one topic that has been discussed in the comments of this video has been the temperature for which I set my water heater to. This is set to 123 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the optimal temperature I've decided on based on the, the output of hot water at the tap, uh, the scald risk, and the amount of energy it takes to heat the water back up. Viewers seem to be very concerned about Legionella, and that's been a, a topic of great debate and great controversy in these discussions, and it's amazing the amount of keyboard experts that come out of the woodwork that are all of a sudden experts in all these things, and I've had people recommend I set this as high as 160 degrees Fahrenheit. 160 degrees Fahrenheit, that is unbelievable. Now, the CPSC, the Consumer Product Safety Commission, recommends setting your water heater to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. All water heaters sold and shipped in the United States are preset by default to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. You will not convince me that it needs to be set to 140, 150, or my gosh, 160 degrees Fahrenheit. You just won't. There is one benefit though to setting a higher temperature, and that is if you're using a thermal mixing valve, and I did purchase one about two years ago. I haven't installed it. I don't think I'll install it, but if you do set this to a higher temperature, like 140 degrees Fahrenheit, and then you install your mixing valve at 120 degrees Fahrenheit, you'll have consistent 120 degree Fahrenheit water, and that'll essentially increase the amount of available hot water, of course, at the expense of energy to heat it that high. Now, on to some of the less discussed but still relevant topics. My gas water heater is cheaper. 
I live in rural Pennsylvania. A lot of the country lives in rural areas. Unless you go and install a large tank in your backyard, most people in rural settings do not have gas. If you have gas and that's cheaper for you, then by all means, keep your gas water heater. But I can't comment as to the economics of gas water heaters versus hybrid or versus electric water heaters. Tankless water heaters are better. You should get one of those instead. Well, maybe they're better for you, but they're certainly not better for me. There are a lot of concerns with inconsistent water delivery temperature. Additionally, those on-demand water heaters, they can require up to 20 or 30 or more kilowatts when they're turned on. As I've pointed out, this is wired entirely off-grid. An inverter system to produce 30 kilowatts of power is going to be a ridiculous amount of money for your on-demand water heater. So having this consume a low amount of power over a large amount of time is definitely preferable over an on-demand instant, I'm going to pound your power system with 30 kilowatts. It's expensive. Yes, it is expensive and it does look expensive at first, but there are a number of ways to reduce the cost of that. For example, my power company provided me with a $400 rebate for installing a heat pump water heater. Most power companies are going to have this, check what their deals are. I sent them the installation information, they mailed me a $400 check. It was that easy. The federal government has a federal tax credit for installing a heat pump water heater, at least they did in 2021. Uh, I don't know if they still do in 2024, I suspect they do. Uh, some local governments have rebates you may get from your local tax office or your state tax office rebates. So there are ways to get the cost of these down. Don't just look at that $1,600 price and say, man, that's expensive. Will this work for radiant floor heating? No, this is not designed for any radiant heating. It's not designed for any circulation-based system. So if you have a, a circulation system that takes the hot water to your tap and then circulates it back down to ensure that you have instant hot water available, it's also not designed for that. Uh, the recovery time just isn't good enough when it needs to heat back up. Mine's broke and nobody will service it. That is a very, very valid concern. There are a lot of moving parts in these heaters, especially since it contains refrigerant. You may need to call in a, an HVAC certified person. Uh, there are some repairs you just won't be able to make on your own. Now, if you have to replace a fan or you have to replace an electric uh, heating element, you know, you can do those kind of things on your own, but anything that involves the compressor or the refrigerant system will likely need a certified person to fix. A lot of companies won't touch these and those that will touch them the bill is often more than simply replacing it or it just negates all the savings, the energy savings. Just because this has a 10 year warranty doesn't mean that services include in that warranty. It may just be a parts warranty. You may receive a part and you still have to pay for a service call and you still have to pay for the labor to install that part. Definitely read up on those warranties before you assume the product you're purchasing has a 10 year or whatever warranty. Lastly, there are a lot of questions around power sources and what kind of power outlets to use. This is a, a standard water heater in the United States that requires a 30 amp, 240 volt power source. In my area, per code, that should be a dedicated circuit, a 10 gauge uh, set of conductors run with a disconnect in line of sight of your water heater, which could be the breaker panel. That's how they are supposed to be run. I have never heard of somebody plugging one of these into any kind of power outlet. I think that's very unsafe. I think that would go against code. Now, if you're outside the United States, your codes and your requirements may be different, but in the United States, that is typically what the code is that's followed. If you're not sure, I would definitely contact a, a licensed electrician. Electrocution and fire is, is no joke. It's nothing to mess with. Next, let's take a look at some of the funny questions. Everyone should learn to shower with 68 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. Also, your health will thank you. No, 68 degree water is freezing cold. I will not be showering in 68 degree water. 50 gallons is a lot. How long are you showering? Six or seven minutes is enough. No wonder Americans bitch about energy costs. 50 gallons is a standard water heater installation in the United States. And uh, no, six to seven minutes is not a long enough shower. And no, that's not a reason to complain about the energy costs in America. People don't really complain about the amount of energy they consume. They complain about the cost of energy, the kilowatt hours the energy is costing. Yes, you can reduce your electric bill by using less energy, but the cost of the kilowatt hour is still the same regardless of the amount of power you use. If it's in the house, it has to be vented outside and you can buy the collars which, for which came with the Gen 4. Who the heck installs one of these things outside? This is not weatherproof. It's not weather resistant. It's not designed to be installed outside. Yes, you can buy fancy ductwork to put the intake and the outtake outside and do all that stuff with louvers. And it's just a ridiculous expense. It's not necessary. If you want to do it, if you have ductwork in place and you know, you can tap the output of this into your ductwork for cooling in the summer, sure, have at it. That's a great idea, but that's not a requirement to install these inside that I'm aware of at least. 
So in conclusion, after having used this for almost four years, yes, I would go out and purchase another one of these in a heartbeat. It's been absolutely phenomenal. We are a normal, typical family of four, and we practically never run out of hot water. There have been a time or two maybe where we've chained several showers back to back and you know it's gotten a little bit cool, but we've never completely run out of hot water. It's never been a problem. It's never been a concern. I just really have nothing bad to say about this unit at all. Um, now that said, if you're going to purchase one or thinking about purchasing one, I would strongly recommend reading through the comments in the videos to get other people's feedback as well. Don't just decide based on my feedback. Listen to what others are saying as well. Um, if you have one of these, please leave your experience down in the comment section so I can see it and so other people can see it. That's Otherwise, if you're still with me, thanks for watching this far. Hit that like button before you go, and I hope you have a wonderful holiday and New Year season.